Okay, uh, welcome to our training on understanding control and monitoring systems. We will start with a brief introduction and introduction to Indusoft's data supervisory control and data acquisition software, control and data acquisition equipment that often interfaces with SCADA software, using SCADA software to display Modbus register data and SCADA-based control and monitoring applications. I'm Maria Santella and I've worked for ICP-USA for over 10 years. I've previously held positions as application engineer, technical sales engineer, and web developer. I also have Robert Morrell, one of our technical support engineers with me. He's worked for ICP-USA for over 10 years, and he will show you how to use Indusoft SCADA software to display Modbus register data later in the training. ICP-USA provides industrial control products and data acquisition systems. We provide industrial data acquisition, data communication, automation control, and tested measurement products. We specialize in easy to use industrial equipment, including PLCs, touchscreen controllers, distributed IO modules, data acquisition systems, communication gateways, ethernet switches, programmable controllers, wireless solutions, and SCADA software. ICP DAS was established in 1993. It focuses on innovation and improving industrial automation technology. Our headquarters is located in Shinshu, Taiwan, and ICP DAS USA was launched in 2001 to support the North and South American markets. We have over 110 R&D engineers that are focused on the needs of the market and work closely with them to support our customers. We provide ROHS compliant lead-free equipment. We have our ISO 9001 certification, which ensures we meet product statutory and regulatory requirements. We do rigorous testing to provide reliable and stable innovation, innovative solutions. We have a very knowledgeable sales staff and can specify products for your applications. We provide free technical support and can help you with questions, setting up equipment, or troubleshooting issues. If you're working on a project with our products and your design, we can get you the CAD files if you need them. Our products are very reliable and come with a one-year warranty. We carry a large inventory and have low lead times for out-of-stock items. We can usually ship within a week after you place an order. We provide free training webinars on the latest in data acquisition, data communication, automation, and control solutions regularly and have many resources on our website for industrial automation training and have white papers, application stories, training videos to help you with using our products and solutions. Our products are easy to use and we provide free PC-based easy data logger software that allows you to quickly and easily set up a control and monitoring system with our IO. It's not as advanced as the SCADA software you'll see in this training, but it's great for smaller control and monitoring applications. Easy Data Logger can be used with other vendors IO as long as you have one of our Modbus IO in the network. We provide a variety of equipment that can be used in industrial environments. Our products have fire retardant plastic or metal housings that support operating temperatures as low as negative 25 C to 75 C, 13, negative 13 degrees Fahrenheit to 167 degrees Fahrenheit. Our equipment's powered by low DC voltage and often it's powered with solar panels and our equipment has low power consumption. Supervisory control and data acquisition, SCADA, is software that enables you to develop HMI interfaces. It connects with hardware elements that allow you to directly interact with sensors, valves, pumps, motors, data acquisition modules, and more. SCADA software can display measurement information on a screen, log data, show alarm information, historical events, show feeds from web cameras, and much more. It supports scripting, and it can display logged data or real-time data in trend graphs. It allows you to get real-time data back from devices and equipment. Through device servers and cellular gateways, remote IoT data can be gathered and shown in SCADA software. On the right here in this screen, <clears throat> you can see that uh, you can add navigation buttons that go to different pages in your project where you can show different screens with information from various equipment, systems, and processes. 
you can set up modes in your process applications and switch from auto to manual with the click of a button. You can animate graphics on the screen that show manufacturing steps and progress in your applications. You can show when users log on and off in event logs like you can see here. IndieSoft is an industry pioneer and was the first HMI package for Microsoft Windows CE. It's a web solution with XML integration in HMI and has a patent for database connectivity. It was the first HMI with native support for OPC Unified Architecture Platform Independent Framework and has multi-touch and HTML5 integration. SCADA software is being used across many industries for many different kinds of applications. It's an HMI, real-time performance management system, can be integrated with supply chain software, can be accessed over a smartphone, and can be published to web pages for remote access. SCADA control and monitoring systems can be accessed from mobile phones through apps on Android and iOS, through web browsers on mobile phones or desktops, or through the web browsers. The Indusoft WebThin client allows users to access their SCADA systems through a web browser. Indusoft offers support for web servers using CGI interfaces like IIS and Apache HTTP servers. It can be run on many operating systems, including Windows 10, 8, 7, Windows Embedded Standard, WinCE, and more. Over 240 communication drivers are included for interfacing with most PLCs, temperature controllers, motion controllers, data acquisition modules, barcode readers, and other equipment. IndieSoft allows you to view multiple trend graphs simultaneously and supports an unlimited number of data points. You can zoom in and scale the graphs, view them horizontally or vertically, and can interact with the trend object during runtime. You can view the data logs in Excel right in the IndieSoft SCADA software application. You can also open them um, in the Excel application. The integrated industrial graphics editor allows you to edit and import graphics and integrate them into your projects. Data acquisition, it's the process of sampling real world physical information and the conversion of those samples into digital numeric values that computers and controllers can understand. The information is often used to implement control logic operations, like the turning on of a fan based on the temperature, the turning on of a pump based on a tank level, and the opening of a valve based on pressure levels. Data acquisition information can be collected by a computer running SCADA software or on a touchscreen PLC. Data can be logged or displayed on the screen. You can turn equipment on or off with the push of a button. Analog information is a variable or adjustable measurement like temperature, pressure, and flow rate. Digital information is fixed and is either on or off. A light and a light switch is an example of something that can be either on or off. A dimmable light is variable in intensity and is analog. Data acquisition modules read values, store them in memory, put the values in a register table, and sends the data in the registers when requested by PLCs, controllers, or software. We have a wide range of industrial data acquisition equipment, including remote and rack-based IO, and many types, including voltage, current, thermistor, thermocouple, RTD, strain gauge, digital, relay output, and accelerometers. Our data acquisition products are available in many protocols and interfaces, including Modbus RTU, Modbus TCP, Ethernet IP, EtherCAT, USB, RS485, Profibus, can open, device net, Wi Fi, Zigbee, and more. Some of our most popular data acquisition modules communicate over Modbus RTU and Modbus TCP. They work easily with SCADA software through the Modbus driver. Modbus is a simple, standard, and robust serial based communications protocol that is widely used for industrial communications for instrumentation, control, and data acquisition. Our remote IO modules are easy to use and come with free software utilities, quick start guides, and user manuals for easy setup and installation. Our Modbus RTU based M7000 modules communicate over RS485, which is two insulated copper wires and can be daisy chained with up to 255 modules in one network. 
They support expandable networks and can communicate up to 4,000 feet and support greater distances with the use of our I-7510 RS-485 repeaters. Our IO have dual watchdogs. So if there are any issues on the hardware or the software side, they will reset themselves and power down and then power back up for reliability. They come with our patented self-tuner and have over voltage, isolation, and ESD protection. Many of them do. Our equipment's made with fire retardant plastic and operates in extended operating temperatures. Modbus TCP communicates over ethernet cabling and supports distances up to 320 feet, 28 feet, which can be extended with an ethernet switch like our NS205. Our ethernet data acquisition modules support IO pairing. So the input on one can be configured to trigger the output on another. The setup of that is through the web HMI interface. Many have power on and safe values for IO status to go to a specific on or off state, similar to how you may want a fan or blower to go to the off position if there's a power failure for safety. So when the power is available again, the equipment could be turned back on manually when it's safe and appropriate to do so. Our touchscreen PLCs that have resistive touchscreen interface, a real-time clock, and a speaker for alerts uh, come with free HMI works development software, which allows for making the user interface and creating and running C language or ladder logic programs. They support Modbus RTU and Modbus TCP protocols for integration with other equipment, software, and SCADA systems. Panel mount IP65 waterproof versions are also available. Our category pages on our website have nice selection tables that outline the differences between the different versions of the products. The TPD series comes with 2.8 to 7 inch displays and can be powered with low DC voltage. Some can be powered over ethernet with a power over ethernet switch or PoE injector. The VPD series come with a 3.5 to 7 inch display and come with more COM port options. Some even have the rubber buttons on the front like shown here. PLCs can run one program and support a proprietary network. They can be programmed in ladder logic or C language and offer continuous scanning. They're often used for amusement park rides, lighting control, and factory assembly lines. Packs allow you to run multiple programs and offer greater interoperability with other systems, use a tag database, and use exception-based logic. PACs have a more open architecture and more connectivity options. <clears throat> we have PACs with Windows CE7, CE5, Windows Embedded, Linux, and more. Our view PACs have touch screens on board. Some have slots for cartridge-based IO modules. They have ports for use with remote IO, rack-based IO, and other devices. We provide equipment that can be used to extend communication distances or convert to other protocols so you can interface with your equipment. Some of our packs have Indusoft runtime inside for running an Indusoft SCADA program. They also have web servers for publishing your project to a web page. WinPack is our programmable automation controller with the Windows CE operating system. You can connect a monitor to them with the VGA port. They have IO slots on board for cartridge-based IO modules and can be expanded upon over RS-485 and ethernet networks. These are widely used in substations in the transportation industry and also in building automation, energy management, and monitoring and control systems. They have a micro SD slot for memory storage. And some come with Indusoft inside. The view pack is similar to the WinPack but has a touchscreen interface for displaying and interfacing with Indusoft SCADA projects. It's a touchscreen controller, and some of them have IO slots on board. They have many communication ports for interfacing with IO and other equipment, and some have Indusoft running inside. Now I'll go over some SCADA control and monitoring applications. In solar powering power monitoring applications, solar panels collect sunlight and turn it into energy which gets sent to the inverter. The inverter converts the DC direct current energy into AC, alternating current energy for the use in commercial electrical grid. 
The DN843ICT current input board has three current input sensors that can be clamped over cables for energy monitoring. They put out a voltage, which our ET7017-10 data acquisition modules take in and pass back to SCADA software on a PC. The SCADA software shows a graph of the energy usage and also logs the data. The TPD433 touchscreen PLC also shows the information on the screen. Our wind packs are being used for remote IO monitoring applications. IO cartridges are installed in the IO slots on the wind pack. One of the IO cartridges is a 3G cellular module that allows PSI, temperature, and tank level data to get back to SCADA software on a PC. The SCADA software displays the values, performs calculations, and shows alarms on the screen when the values are not in the desired range. Email and text message alarms get sent out to alert appropriate personnel. Our cellular pack, 3G Gateway and Data Acquisition M7019R data acquisition modules are being used in remote monitoring systems. The M7019R is collecting voltage, current, and temperature data from equipment out at remote sites. The M7019R is connected to the G4513 3GWA power saving pack, which are being powered by a solar panel. The pack is running a C language based program that collects the data and passes it back to a SCADA system at a remote location. The GRP520 3G gateway is connected to the PC over ethernet. The SCADA software collects the voltage, temperature, and current information and displays it on the screen. Data from different sites are collected so buttons on the screen can take the viewer to a different page in the software for each site. Alarm data is shown on the screen in a pop-up window. Data from the different sites is logged and stored for analysis and can be opened in Excel. So now Robert's gonna be showing you how to use SCADA software to display Modbus register data. Okay, hello, Maria. Okay, let's see, let me switch screens so you can see my screen. Let's see. Okay, let's see. Okay, can you all see my screen? Maria? Yes. Okay, let's see. This is the Wonderware slash Indu Soft Web Studio uh, version eight uh, demo. I like to show this to show some of the features and some of the uh, examples that you can use for creating your own project. Uh, based on uh, the, the demo itself, it shows off some of Indu Soft's uh, wonderful features that you can use to create your own HMI and uh, SCADA software uh, to for your application. Uh, this is one of my favorite screens. It shows some of the animations that you can do to create your projects. <clears throat> um, let's see, it shows how to use a bar graph. Uh, in this case, it's a slider showing tank level or uh, a fill level, and you can adjust the direction and uh, color change as well. Um, let's see, for the second example, it shows the color changes, just shows different objects, different buttons, uh, which can change color based on statuses. Uh, the data entry or text fields, we'll use one of those in our project later when we create an example showing how to communicate using one of our Modbus TCP modules. Uh, position uh, shows both angular and uh, transparency. Has rotation. Uh, you can adjust the size of an image. Uh, the flame shown in this image is actually uh, a certain size. Indusoft just blows up the uh, image or shrinks it to add the effect of uh, the flame growing. <clears throat> uh, you can create a position, horizontal and vertical. Uh, you can hyperlink into in your project so you can open web pages. Uh, you can have use buttons to control different objects. Uh, some of the ActiveX objects. Uh, let's see, we'll show here. Uh, let's see, just shows some more features you can use to display your uh, data statuses and data IO. Uh, so you can display messages, you can control your IO, uh, recipe management, uh, you can create reports from within Indusoft. 
Uh, I'll show you how to uh, log data into a historian, and then we can open the file in Excel format later. Uh, you can do trend curves. Uh, this is great for visually showing the status of your IO. Let's see, alarm features. You can uh, view alarms, like for instance, if machinery needs uh, servicing, if a, a drill bit breaks or you know, the production is stopped for some reason, you can know in the management software here. And it supports multi-touch and gesture controls. Uh, let's see, here's some industry examples. <clears throat> uh, Indusoft uh, is not designed for one specific industry, but for virtually any industry you can use in communication to almost all the industrial standard protocols, and you can create your own uh, what do you call it? communication module if you need to. And you can use some of our gateways if uh, the protocols need to be converted to a different protocol. Uh, this particular uh, demo has the many industry examples. Uh, here's just a few of them, showing off some of the visually stimulating aspects of Indusoft. A project can be something as simple as just displaying numbers on a screen, or you can use animation, create your own uh, objects, import them into Indusoft, and uh, make the application uh, alive. Okay. These just show different statuses. Notice that the color change is shown here, some animation. Uh, here's some trend, uh, or I'm sorry, some bar graphs. And just some additional industry examples. Uh, now what I'll do is I'll show you how to connect and create your own first project. Uh, for this project example, I will use one of our uh, Modbus TCP data acquisition modules. In this case, it's our Y7167. It's a Modbus TCP uh, slave device, as well as a simple if then else controller. So if you had like a simple program, you can use the WISE series modules. We have many with different uh, configurations of IO and channel types. Uh, this particular one is just a relay output module, but uh, what do you call it? You can use this in combination with some of our other modules to create logic to control an application. And uh, it also has counters built in. So for this particular WISE module, uh, since it's Modbus TCP, the first thing we need to do is get the Modbus address table. So I have a copy of it here. Uh, this is from the manual itself. For the Y7167, it has uh, eight relay channels. Uh, notice here the start address is uh, Modbus address 20, but since this manual is base zero, we it will be uh, 21 in the project. But uh, just know that it's uh, essentially going to be 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, and 28 for our project. Uh, I know the IP address of the module itself. I pre-configured it. In this case, it's 21.127.198.131. I brought up the web page, and through the web page, you can uh, configure the module and create logic rules uh, for controlling your application and for interacting with other modules. Uh, through the channel status page, which we'll take advantage of for our uh, SCADA project, we can control the uh, relay output statuses here, and uh, uh, we'll see the animation and the changes of the statuses in our project. So what I'll do is I'll go back to Indusoft now, and we'll just try to create a project and show you how to uh, use Indusoft. So we'll click on New, and we'll call it, um, let's just call it Training Demo training demo and we'll just use the default for now uh, the default is used for um, uh, creating a project for a pc but you can also use it for embedded systems okay so this would be the uh, uh, main screen uh, the first thing we want to do is create our communication to the module uh, in this case it's modbus tcp to do this you click on driver and in this case, we're going to add a driver. Uh, we know what driver we want to install, which is Modbus TCP, because that's the communication protocol for the module we have connected. So we need to scroll down. 
uh, to Modbus TCP and we select it. It'll appear down here and we'll add it. It'll appear over here under the driver. If you need help with this, like uh, knowing the format or anything, uh, Indusoft has some wonderful help guides uh, with built in. So for the Modbus TCP, we can click on help, or I'm sorry, right click and then click on help. And it brings up the uh, driver uh, identification and help mod and help information in PDF format. And we'll use some of this information later. Uh, specifically, you need to know what format the um, IP address and everything are required. For this, we can use this as an example. Uh, actually right here, this right here. So it's IP address, port number, which we know is 502. That's gonna be almost always the case with Modbus TCP. And the PLC ID is a, a module address. In this case, it'll be one. Uh, most often with Modbus TCP, it's identified based on a one because the IP address is unique. For Modbus RTU, uh, the uh, PLC ID or Modbus address would be different. Well, let's get back to our example then. So what we need to do is modify the main driver sheet here. And we want to just, in this case, we'll just say create three tags. We'll call it DO, oops, DO0. Since the tag doesn't exist, it asks, would you like to create it? I'll click yes. Uh, this one is a Boolean tag, so we need to select Boolean, but you can also do uh, analog tags if you want in integer format, real or string. So just click on that and set it up. And for the station address, that is the IP address 21.127.198.0.0. One thirty one, which is the IP address of the uh, Modbus TCP slave in this case, colon five hundred two, which is the port number, and uh, module address, which is one. Uh, next, we need to know the I/O address. Uh, this is based on the Modbus register table, which I showed previously, which was right here. Uh, again, note that this is a coil address. And since it's base zero, we need to change it to base one for Indusoft. So it would be 0x21. So we'll go back there. Just 0x colon 21. And we have our first tag. We'll say create three tags DO1. Copy this. Yes, I want to create it. Yes. So we'll copy this. Control C. Control V, 0x22. Let's try to be consistent. So D, O, oops, 2. Yes, I created integer boolean. Yes, copy the IP address. Zero x colon 23. So we'll create three tags for this uh, project. Uh, they're all relay uh, outputs in this case, which are coils. And they're read writable. So we'll leave this as is. Uh, the next thing we'll do is we'll just create a simple graphic screen to display these. And I can show you the op operation of it. So we'll go to the graphics tab here, go to screens. Right click and insert new screen. Uh, in this case, I'll just call it main since it will be our main screen. And we'll just use everything defaults. Uh, it'll just be a blank screen, but you can add, certainly add animations, add a background image, change the color of the background to make it look more appealing. Uh, let's see, in this case, let's just uh, modify it a little bit to be a different color. Let's just do maybe a light green, let's do a light blue. Okay, this looks better. Okay, let's see, let me just move this. Okay, first what we'll do is we'll just add a title. So I click on text and just wherever I wanna place it, 
text box and we'll call it wise demo in this case and we'll just create some text and we'll just do do zero just to create some labels so we know what we're displaying do one create one more these are just labels, DO2. So it's just text. Oh, in this case, you want capital. Okay, uh, next we'll uh, use the text box to display the value. This will, in this case, since they're digital outputs, they'll be either zero or one. To do this, we just click on text box and we uh, create the location and size we want to create. We click off of it and we double click on it to add the tag name. So for this one, since we created the tag previously, we click on the three dots here. Uh, the tags will show up here, uh, DO0, DO1, and DO2. For this one, we want to display DO0. And we don't want to do any scaling or anything. If you needed to do scaling, you can, uh, for analog tags, you can certainly adjust it here and uh, change something from, say, 0 to 100% to actual temperature or vice versa, or for levels or any flow rates, you can adjust those here. So we'll create that. We'll create a few more text boxes just to display the three values. We won't pay too much attention to size. If you wanted to actually create a nice project, you can certainly adjust the size and copy the boxes. Let's just try to actually control C, control V. Let's do that down a little bit, modify this to B, DO2, off of it. So we have DO1 or DO0, DO1, and DO2. Uh, let's see, what we'll do is we'll also create a button to exit the project. Oftentimes I forget this, it's a very simple thing, but if not, you just need to use Windows and either press the Windows key and close it. But to make it simple, we'll just use one of the built-in buttons. In this case, you wanna use the button exit. You double click on it and place it over here. And it's just to exit to stop the screen. But you also have the option to be able to create buttons to do many different operations like printing, uh, like running um, scripts. You can also use it for page changes and whatnot. Uh, let's see, for next, we'll create a push button also to control the uh, digital output status. We'll just create a button, we'll double click on it, and we'll make this momentary, and we'll set the tag as DO0. We'll create, let's try this button. We'll use that for this one, double click on it. Let's see. Uh, this one's a little more complicated. Let's just use a simpler one. I don't want to give too much into scripting for this example since it's one of our webinars, but if you do need help with uh, creating a project, we can certainly help you with uh, other projects. But let's see, let's make this one a maintained button. Let's call this D, oh, there's D, I did a lowercase in that one. And we'll do one more. <coughs> push button, there we go. Make this one bigger just to make it different. And this one will do latched and we'll call it DO2. We'll save it. So now comes the fun part, we'll see if it works. Okay, so I wanna save all first. Save it. And we click on the little icon up here to run it. 
And let's see now. Let me open up my screen over here to control the IO. What I'm going to do is turn channel zero and channel two on. And we'll see if it shows in IndoSoft. Uh, this one. Oh, let's see, I got one of them. I'm not sure. Where they are. I probably didn't adjust the tag name, but let's see. Let's check it out and see what I did. So DO2. Huh. That's right. Not sure why it didn't change, but let's go back to the web interface. Let's see. Okay, that's on. So we'll go back to our runtime. Hmm. Maybe my oh there it goes. I'm sorry. Okay. So it is showing there. So let's click no, we want to stay here. Let's just change some of the IO. This one being momentary, as I hold down the uh, mouse button, it uh, maintains it at a one, but one, once I let go, it changes to a zero. This one, I just use toggle. So every time I press it, it has a different option. It changes from zero to one. And this one, okay, I guess I didn't do the button right, but you know what I mean. Let's see. So now that we have this, let's show you how to log the data. So to log the data into a database, we need to go here and go to the trend and we just right click and insert. We want to insert our tag names. We're going, to, we're going to use a proprietary database and just save the data changes every second. So we'll do DO0, DO, I think I did lowercase one, and then DO2, and we'll save these. <clears throat> What this will do is save the value of each of these uh, channels every second. Uh, if you wanted to create your own trigger, like say, for instance, when IO changes, uh, you can also do that. If you want to log faster, you can use a different tag. In this case, I'm just going to use the default of the second tag. So basically every clock tick for every second, it'll save the data into the proprietary database. You also have the option to save it into the Wonderware historian or a separate SQL database. But for this example, we'll just use the uh, Wonderware slash Indusoft uh, standard database. And we'll just call it uh, data as a description. So we'll do file, save all, save it, and we'll run it. We probably won't see a difference here, but let's just create some data since it's running. Okay, let's see, I ran it for a few seconds, maybe 20 seconds. We'll see some ones and zeros change in the actual results. Okay, so now that we've created a database and uh, the data should be stored in the historian, let's find it. Should be over here. I think it's saved in my documents, and then it's under Wonderware projects. This project was called Training Demo. And we want to go historian, and here's our data. Uh, the proprietary database you can't open uh, normally, so you can't view it. You can see what the data would look like in its own uh, format. But what we'll do is we'll show you how to convert it. I'll, I'll do it the simple way. Previously, we've used uh, one of the built-in executables. You can certainly create your own script to do it, but Indusoft has a feature called a history to text. Let's see, it's a program that runs. Essentially what it does is changes the historian to a text or CSV format. From there, you can open it in Excel. So you just simply drag it on top and run it. It'll create a separate database. In this case, we want the TXT format. And it looks like this. And if we want to open this file in 
Excel, we certainly could do that. Let's see, in Excel we do, oops, Excel over here so you can see it. Okay, so within Excel we do open, and let's see, we need to find that file. And this, well, this is a previous example that I, when I practice, so we'll just do this one. But essentially it's CSV format, so we just need to do, uh, in this case, fixed width, because it's uh, tab delimited. Just click next, it shows an example. Not perfect, but we'll just show it and click finish. And the results will be similar to this, where it just shows the results in Excel format. Um, let's see, that's all I have today for today's example. But again, Indusoft is a very easy to use uh, SCADA package. It's great for interacting with most of our data acquisition and control modules and can certainly be used as an HMI uh, solution for almost any application out there. Uh, if anyone has any questions, uh, now is a good time to ask them. You type Let's it see. in the chat box. Yeah, uh, type it in the chat box if you have any questions or uh, we can unmute you and you can ask it live. See. Let's see, I'm looking at the Q&A box. I'm not seeing any questions. Uh, let's see, if anyone has any questions, you could also raise your hand. You could also email us if you'd like. Hmm. Okay. I don't see any questions, but if anyone has any questions concerning the WISE module or uh, Indusoft SCADA solution, uh, we'd be happy to answer those. And uh, we can give you examples. Uh, we can show you training videos. We can, uh, what do you call it? Even send you a demo version of the new uh, version software so you can use it for, I think, one week. Oh, I do see a chat. Let's see. How do you apply scaling? OK, scaling. Uh, the question is, how do I apply scaling? So let's see, within Indusoft, if it was an analog tag, it would be over here under the project tag. Uh, well, this one's Boolean, but let's see, we can do it in the driver sheet rather. So main driver sheet, when we created the tag, uh, let's see, here we go. Oh, okay, let me create an analog tag actually. Let's see here. So if I had an AI tag, let's just assume it's here, control C, and let's do integer this time. Let's just use the same IP address, control C, control V, and I think that we can do a 3x colon 21 and possibly see something. Do scaling. What we do is we come over here, go to our project tags, analog tag. There we go. Is it on the display part? Let's see. I know I did it before. <laughs> huh. I think when you were showing the. Um, I know when I showed it earlier, I saw the display it. part, the little text box. Oh, yeah, yeah. OK, that's right. Very good, Maria. Thank you for your help. I forget. So within the graphics tab, there we go. When we uh, displayed it over here, uh, we had the option to create the tag. So in this case, we changed it to the analog tag. And then we used the min and max value and the display value to, uh, uh, to create the scaling. OK, uh, does anyone else have any other questions? Or does that answer your question? Um, they also asked, is there metric conversion? A metric conversion is. 
uh, what do you call it? Not something that there's a built-in function, but you can certainly modify that. For instance, if your data was say zero to 100% and you wanted to create, convert that to uh, meters or feet, you just have to divide the actual value by a certain number. Uh, for Celsius to Fahrenheit, uh, the formula is what, five nines plus 32. So you just need to create a mathematical formula for that or use the max and min values to uh, display it here or adjust for it. Let's see, any more questions? Yeah, the data that's stored in the database can be either the raw value or you can uh, create or log the scaled value. If we went to the tasks over here, I think in the trend uh, data, you can also do the same thing here. You can adjust the value that you wanna see in the database versus the raw data, which is uh, default or logged by default, okay? Uh, if no one has any other questions, then uh, I guess we want to wish you a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, and we'll see you for our next uh, webinar next month in January. Thank you for attending.